Hello everyone, my name is Ikenna from Smiling Sun. Everything solar installation, everything in Vata installation, everything going green. All right, and today we are talking high voltage inverters because I get that question all the time. Um, people ask, why is it that some inverters use extremely very high voltage to power them up? Why? What's the difference between the very high voltage inverters and the regular uh, low voltage inverters that we're used to, which is 48 volts that we use uh, right in our homes or pretty much offices? All right, so let's delve into it and find out exactly why this is if this is your first time on this channel and you haven't subscribed why not now would be a good time for you to subscribe click that button and subscribe so that we can let you know when we have fresh videos coming up all right so let's find out why are some inverters running on extremely very high voltage why are they not running on very low voltage all right what is the advantages and what exactly is the disadvantage of this high voltage as opposed to having the low voltage inverters all right why these inverters run on extremely very high voltage is because it's designed to run that way all right it is designed for places where you have large energy demands all right like companies manufacturing companies industrial um, establishments or industrial setup like big manufacturing industries places where you require very large energy to power up their machines all right and it's also specially built for static appliances all right so for instance this is a 30 kva inverter all right and it runs on 385 volts so what that means essentially is that you're going to require 32 batteries to power it up all right, you require 12 volts by 32 batteries to be able to power up uh, this inverter. All right, so you can see here, uh, what we essentially have here is 32 batteries. All right, so the connections are gonna be done in series. So you're gonna have the connection from one end of the uh, battery terminal to the other end. Everything is gonna be connected in series. But because you have a whole lot of batteries going on here, what you essentially supposed to do is after all of these connections, what you will require here is a battery management system, an equalizer that will ensure that all the batteries are receiving the same equal amount of charge. If you don't do that, because you have a whole lot of batteries going on, some batteries might begin to fail. Some of the batteries might be overcharged and some will be undercharged. And if that happens, some of the batteries will begin to die off. And once the batteries, one of the batteries die, it will put pressure on the other ones. So make sure that whenever you're connecting this large fleet of batteries that you have some form of battery management system present. And it's also a good thing for you to also know that the high voltage inverter, it's also divided in phases. So the electrical output unit is designed to run in different phases and this gives you some form of flexibility for you to be able to segment the load in different places as the energy needs demand and it's also de designed for places where you're going to have a lot of interaction with your on-grid installations as well what are the advantages and what are the disadvantages of having a high voltage in fact, because it's produced and designed essentially for places where you have large energy needs, it makes more sense for you to be able to have all of these batteries connected as one, as opposed to having to connect them in series, mix of series and parallels. All right. So you just connect pretty much everything and everything goes on the same flow for ease of wiring and of course communication amongst the batteries. Now, someone asked, how can we make this process more cost effective for uh, the owners of this installation? But what other way can we do this connection if the energy needs are not so very much and you want to make it very cost effective and you want to make it um, a little bit flexible for the upgrades in the battery, all right? Uh, what other way can you achieve having a 30 kilowatt or having like 50 kilowatt? My advice would be um, don't buy the 30 kilowatts at one unit. You can get 10, 10 kilowatts and parallel them to be able to give you a 30 kilowatt. In that way, you would have control on the upgrade. It wouldn't cost you so much. For instance, for you to replace 32 batteries, um, for you to do an upgrade on this 30 kilowatt, because the whole unit comes as one, you would have to double 
the size of the battery. So that means you're gonna have to buy 64 batteries, all right? And if you want to increase it again, you would have to buy another 32 batteries and on and on and on. So it doesn't give you so much flexibility to be able to add a little. But you can actually use a 1010 kilowatt inverter and parallel them to make one unit, thereby giving you that flexibility of having a 48 uh, volt system, which means you can increase by four, by eight, thereabouts. So it's a lot easier for you uh, to be able to do the increase without having to buy as much as 32 batteries and on and having so much batteries going on. So that's essentially what you're gonna do. And one of the beauties of also um, segmenting your kilowatts in little units and now paralleling them to now make a big kilowatt is the fact that if one of them goes bad you're not completely stranded you can use the other ones and still uh, be supplying your energy needs spending when you repair the other ones but take take for example if anything happens to this as a unit that means you're stranded and the energy needs of this place uh, would have to be on the pause until you go back and you're able to repair this particular inverter and that in itself is uh, counterproductive all right so you can do a 10 kilowatts in three places parallel them to form one unit of a 30 kilowatt and now have a 48 volt system that you can increase of uh, the batteries with